Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about the Mouse Guard Role Playing Game System. Now, I had previously done a review of the Mouse Guard Role Playing Game Starter Box set, in which I discussed the Starter Box set as a product, uh, talking about all that it contains, and also discussed and reviewed it as how good it is as a place to start for the Mouse Guard role playing game. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about the system and the primary rule book for the Mouse Guard role playing game. So now if you're not familiar with Mouse Guard, the Mouse Guard world is based on a comic book slash graphic novel series, which involves anthropomorphic little mice using a medieval level of technology, so you know, swords, axes, bows, spears, that sort of thing, to defend their mouse world against the monsters of it, which are basically predators that would normally feed on mice. So things like snakes and toads and weasels are the big baddies of the mouse guard world, but also sometimes having to protect it against uh, the machinations of evil mice. Now, it's a very fun and compelling world. It's actually very interesting. The, the graphic novels are fantastic. If you haven't read them, I highly recommend them. And they're a great way to get a feel for this role-playing game world. Now, I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes in this video some of the things that came in the starter box set. But don't worry, the rule book, which you can buy separately, is really all you need to play the game. These extra bits are a bit unnecessary, so I want to address that first, but they are fun and they are they look good on camera. So the, one of the things that comes in the box set are these special dice. Now the dice have uh, snakes on one side, they have, uh, excuse me, snakes on three sides, a ha they have a black axe on one side and a pair of cross swords on two sides. Now these dice are highly unnecessary. They're nice if you got the box set and you can use them, but you only need regular six-sided dice for this. The snakes represent failures, and on a regular six-sided dice, that would be a one, two, or a three. The swords and axes represent successes, the swords being a four or a five, and the axe being a six. And the reason the axe is different is because if you roll a six or an axe, there are a couple of extra things you can spend resources on to do on a roll of a six. So that's why it's important it's to uh, mark it out. But if you just have regular six-sided dice, that is fine. The other really cool resource it comes with are all these cards. Now, it comes with cards for equipment. These are things like, for instance, here's a staff, here's a spear. These are, these are unnecessary, but they're nice. You can put them in front of you if you have them to keep track of the equipment, but you could have the equipment just marked on your character sheet instead. They also have these cards for statuses. Statuses are very important to the game. So statuses are things like sick, injured, tired, angry, and hungry or thirsty. So here's the hungry, thirsty card. And again, you could just note this down on your character sheet or on some scrap paper. It's not necessary, but these are fun little game aids. And the last one, which is the one that I find closest to being necessary, even though it still isn't, is the action cards. Now the action cards are defend, faint, maneuver, and attack. Now, these act as quick references on the bottom. They show you how they interact with the other types of actions, as well as a good way to hide and then reveal what your action is going to be. You put it face down and you reveal it simultaneously. But again, they're not 100% necessary. You could just jot down what the action is you're taking during that round of the combat on your character sheet or on a piece of scrap paper, cover it with your hand and then reveal it simultaneously with the game master. And that's also fun. Now, so the Mouse Guard role playing game system is a D6 based system. It uses only six sided dice. So, six sided dice along with the rule book are really all you're going to need. And the way it generally works is you will have statistics like fighter, healer, hunter, instructor, scout, etc., for whatever it is that you uh, might want to accomplish during the game. And whatever your rank is in that stat is how many dice you roll. So if you have a fighter of three and you're trying to attack someone, you roll three dice. Pretty simple. 
very easy to figure out, very easy to use. So you take your three dice, you roll them, and you take a look at what you got. And again, any of those snakes eating their own tail there are a failure. Any uh, cross swords or axes are successes. Now, if you're doing an unopposed roll in the mouse guard system, your game master is gonna set a difficulty for that roll. So an un unopposed roll might be something like uh, scout. So let's say you're trying to scout a path to find your way through the forest. So you look and you say, okay, I have a scout skill of five. You roll five dice and your, let's say your game master said the difficulty of this particular area for scouting is two. You need at least two successes to succeed. Again, very simple. Now, if it becomes an opposed roll, uh, for instance, if you're attacking while your opponent is defending, it's whoever rolls the more successes. It's, there's not a set objective then. So if you roll an attack and you get three successes, and your opponent rolls a defense but only rolls two successes, you have rolled more attacks, so you will succeed. Though, with an opposed ver of attack versus defense, the defense actually gets to reduce the strength of the attack slightly based on how many defense uh, successful defense rolls they had. And that's the gist of how the game works. There, there is more to it though. In addition to your skills, you have some other statistics. There is mouse nature, will, health, resources, and circles. There are also wises, and there are traits. And these are all other interesting things that you can add in when doing your roles in different ways. Now, mouse nature is literally tapping into the nature of being a mouse to do something. Sometimes you can use it instead of the appropriate skill. Now, things that are within the mouse's nature, things like foraging for food, running and hiding, those are free to use with mouse nature and you never need to take a skill of those sort of things. You can, however, tap your mouse nature and use it for um, things that are outside of your nature. For instance, even attacking. But if you do so and you fail, you're going to temporarily tax or reduce your mouse nature for using it in that way. Uh, willpower and health are used to recover from certain uh, negative status effects, things like hungry, thirsty, angry, uh, tired, etc. Uh, willpower for things that are that are more mental, like being, being uh, tired or angry, whereas the, the health is more for things that are physical, like being hungry or sick. Uh, and then Resources and circles have to do with your contacts and being able to either scrounge up resources or find a person that can help you. In addition, wises are very interesting. Wises are things that you specialize in being very wise about. So you might be snake wise, and therefore you are very wise in what sorts of snakes are venomous, uh, what are snakes' weaknesses, what are snakes' behaviors, things like that. You've studied up on these things. And wises can be used to aid uh, your teammates sometimes in a better uh, in getting a better chance to succeed in actions in your area of expertise. In addition, they can be used to aid yourself in, in getting dice re-rolls uh, when using your wise. Now, that is done by spending uh, a, resource, a couple of resource points that you have that can be spent in multiple ways known as persona points and fate points. Now, persona points and fate points, you at the beginning of the first session, you get one of each. And then during the session, by role playing and playing properly in your character towards your goal or, or towards or against your own beliefs and then deciding to change your beliefs if you played against them, can earn you up to three persona or fate points for the next game. And persona and fate points can be spent in different ways. Now, I just talked a little bit about how they can be spent with, with wises. You can spend one fate point to reroll one die when it involves uh, one of your wise, or you can spend one persona point to reroll all missed fate dies, uh, all missed dice when it when it involves your, your wise. In addition, you can spend one fate point to roll another die for every axe you have rolled for any roll. So that is why the axes can be more important than the cross swords. Now the persona points uh, can be used one per up to three persona points to add a die to your roll before doing that roll. In addition, a persona point can be used to, to do something called tapping your nature, where you can add a number of dice 
equal to your nature to the roll, and then you will tax your nature one point after the roll, or if you fail the roll, you tax your nature by a number of points equal to the number of points you missed the target by. So that can be dangerous. Now, while that can be dangerous, these can be very, very effective at, at going really epic. When your little mouse is battling a giant snake and you really need to, to hit that snake hard, maybe it's time to, to use some fate and persona points to get that one big roll that, that you, you get a whole bunch of extra dice for and then get to roll more dice for every axe you roll. And for those more dice that you roll, if you roll another axe, you, you get to keep chaining and roll more and more dice. In addition to all of this, you have one final uh, statistic which is known as traits. Now, traits can be used both positively and negatively for your mouse in mouse guard. So uh, you could have a trait, maybe you're curious. Now, if you use it positively, the trait can give you an extra die for that roll. If you use it negatively, you can either reduce one die from that roll, you can use it more negatively than that to give your opponent two extra dice for that roll instead of reducing yourself one die, or you can uh, use it as a tiebreaker when for your opponent to use it negatively. Now, these sort of things help to encourage role playing because using it negatively, I mean, it's not directly benefiting you, it's, it's, it's bad, but there is something you earn for it. You see, for, for every time you use one of your traits negatively, you earn checks later at the end of the game that can help you advance skills. Now, this is a level-less role-playing game system. You don't go up levels. What you do do is you increase your skills based on how much you use them. So, to increase a skill, you must have a uh, past checks for that skill equal to the level of the skill and past and, and also had a number of failed checks for that skill equal to one less than the level of that skill, and then you get to go up one point in the appropriate skill, and you go up immediately. You don't have to wait between games like you do in a lot of other role-playing game systems. Now, doing negative traits to some of your skill checks earn you extra tests between games, or at the end of the game, if you will, towards some of your skills of your choice. So you can say, you know what? Uh, I want I need some more checks for fighter. I'm going to decide that after this adventure is done, I'm gonna practice dueling with my friend and I'm gonna roll some fighter rolls and see if I get some passes or fails because it's gonna help me go up a level in fighter. And that is the gist of, of, of most of how Mouse Guard works. Now, when you are in a fight or a more complicated um, adversarial type situation, for instance, an argument or, or a debate or something like that, you, you use a little bit of a more uh, complicated system. Now, it's a little more abstract than in a lot of other role-playing game systems, but it involves these cards that I showed you for the defend, feint, maneuver, and attack. So you decide as a group, first you pick who's going to be the captain that's gonna help organize the group for this particular conflict and its resolution. And the captain is gonna decide in what order you do three particular actions. And you can do multiple actions of the same kind. You can say feint, feint, and then attack, or you could say defend, defend, and then maneuver, or attack, 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 if you wanted. And you, the captain will set down cards that he they want to do uh, after quietly discussing with their compatriots, they will set down three cards in the order they want to do them, face down, in front of them, while the game master does the same. Again, now if you don't have the cards, you can just jot these down on a piece of scrap paper and cover them up. Then you reveal them one at a time in each of the three rounds of that round of combat to see what happened. So both you and the game master flip it up, and you attacked while the game master also attacked you both get to roll your attacks and try to hit each other. Now, at the beginning of a conflict, you roll for disposition. There's no actual hit points in this game, which is a little might be a little strange to you if you're used to other role-playing games. But you you get to roll disposition based on the the appropriate stat being used for this com conflict. So you take a number of dice that is equal to your 
your skill that you're using for this particular kind of conflict. So if it was a fight, let's say you had five points in your fight skill. So you take five dice. Then you take another die that is given to you by each of the other players to aid you in, in the starting disposition of your party for this fight. So if there are two other players in the group, each of them give you another die. Then you roll these dice and see how many successes you get, and you add that to either your health or your mouse nature for a fight. Now there are other stats that you might add that to for different types of conflicts, but for a, a combat-based conflict, this is how it would work. And then however many successes, plus your just base stat of either health or mouse nature, is the starting disposition for your group in that fight. Now, if your opponent is just an animal, most animals have one stat and one stat only, which is their nature, and the animal would roll their nature and then add that to their base nature for their starting disposition. Now, at the beginning of the fight, you say what your goal is. So your goal could be something as simple as, well, we need to kill the snake. But it could be something a little easier, like trying to drive it off, because it's harder to kill the snake than it is to just drive it away. Now, if you succeed and succeed very well, for instance, your disposition is still full or very close to full, and your opponent's disposition is completely wiped out, and your goal was to kill it, you killed it. The enemy is dead. However, the the further your disposition has come down, the more concessions your group is going to have to take. For instance, if you were very, very a fairly high disposition, but your but your and your opponent's disposition is completely wiped out, you might need to take some statuses like. Uh, injured or tired amongst the different members of the group having gotten hurt or, or exhausted during the fight. Whereas the lower it gets, you might even um, not have killed the snake but literally just driven it away even though you, you won because your own disposition was very low. Now because of this, because of this, this group statistic of the disposition to the party representing in an abstract way your goal, it's actually rare for members of your group to be killed without there being a total party kill, and um, unless you have split the party, which of course, if you're experienced in role-playing games, you know the rule, never split the party. So it, it is rather interesting. It's a little more abstract than I'm used to, but this is, this is pretty cool. The skill system is fairly easy to use. It gets a little more complicated with the the system for the combat and a little more advanced also with the the points for earning fate points and persona points and how you use them in a conflict to in many different ways having multiple ways to use both fate points and persona points makes it a little bit more advanced now th this is a little strange because on one hand just using six-sided dice and just having a stat that tells you how many dice you roll is simple. And it seems like, oh, okay, this is easy. I can teach this to beginners. But then once you get into the meat and potatoes of the game, it is a bit more advanced. And it's more advanced than it seems at first glance. Some beginners might be a little confused by it. And overall, I would say it's a mid-weight complexity game. Not really super advanced, but not really super simple either. But that's not bad, that's a good thing. It actually, it, it's nice that the basic rules are quick enough to pick up and easy to learn, while there are, a, there are more advanced and complicated rules to sink your teeth into after you've been playing the game for a while. In addition, the rulebook is very user-friendly. It contains lots of things that are great for the game master. It has fully fleshed out towns and communities all throughout the Mouse Guard world. It has tons of villains and monsters fully statted out, easy to use, just to turn to the page and say, boom, I'm ready to go. Here's the snake, fight the snake. And it's great like that. It also has multiple example adventures, some of which based on the adventures from the Mouse Guard comic books, and others that are brand new that are just designed for the role-playing game book. I would say this is a very fun system. I enjoy it quite a bit. I like the world. I think the, the, the mechanic of having three actions placed down secretly and then revealed one at a time and then you say, okay, so Lynn is going to attack for the first action and the snake is going to be uh, doing a defense. So now they roll up and see what happens. Then we flip up the next card and I say, well, now 
I am going to maneuver and the snake is 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 going to be doing a faint or you know and on the third card and then uh she is going to defend while the snake is is doing an attack and and you don't really know what they are until everybody's flipped them up and then each of the the actions interact with each other in different ways because the defend can reduce the attack or negate it completely and even bring back persona points if it does really well uh, attack can reduce persona points from your opponent's side and so can a feint whereas a maneuver can help to improve your position so that your next action be it an attack feint whatever will automatically get more dice and and, and have a better chance of, of having a greater effect so the, these are all it's a really cool system i like it a lot it's very interesting it's very different i've never played a role-playing game that's quite like mouse now i do know that this is based on the burning wheel role-playing game system but i have not played that system so there you have it uh, the mouse guard system is interesting. It's quick and easy to pick up to begin with, but then does have more advanced rules. And a very interesting, in my opinion, one of the most intuitive ways to advance your skills of any game I've ever played. It's not just, I go up a level and I get to advance a few skills. You have to use that skill and you have to fail with it sometimes. So you have to get some successes and you have to get some failures and you learn from your successes and failures and then that skill immediately goes up. That can even happen in the middle of a combat. Now on a negative side, I do feel like I shouldn't just be saying lots and lots of positive things about it, even though I really like this game. On a negative side, that can be a little tricky to keep track of. I did have a complaint from Lynn while we were playing this game that she had trouble keeping track of it, especially since during a conflict or a single scene, each skill is only allowed to get one point from a check, either a pass or a fail, and sometimes she forgot whether or not she had already given it a point from that particular conflict. I think that's a minor thing. You can easily keep track of it on scrap paper, but it is an issue and it is a concern, so I did want to mention it. But overall, I do very much like this system. And out of 10 stars, I give the Mouse Guard role-playing game system 8 out of 10 stars because I really do like it. I really do think it's a very well thought out system. It's very enjoyable. It's very user friendly for the game master. It's, it's very interesting and different and innovative. So eight out of 10 stars for me. But let's get a second opinion. Blaine, how many stars out of 10 would you give to the Mouse Guard role playing game system? Seven. So Lynn gave it a seven, which also means she quite liked it, just not as enthusiastically as I did. I did already mention she had a few gripes with the system, though they were minor, but she did like it and she said she would play it again. So there you go, there you have it. Seven stars from Lynn, eight stars from me for the Mouse Guard role-playing game system. So let me ask you, have you played the Mouse Guard role-playing game system? If you have, what did you think? Did you like it? Did you agree with me that it's really, really awesome? Did you dislike it? Do you totally disagree with me? Have you played the Burning Wheel system? How is it different or how is it similar to the Mouse Guard system? I know this is a modified version of the Burning Wheel system. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, either about this video or about the Mouse Guard role-playing game system, please put them in the comments down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see me do more like it, please give it a like, share this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain, that's Captain spelt with a K, on YouTube. And until next time, game on.